Hello everyone, this is Daryl20 and welcome to episode, uh-oh, 42 of Daryl20's Create Above and Beyond Let's Play series. Hope you brought your towels, because today is going to be a fun one. Uh, I'm going to create an overcomplicated and way more insane than it needs to be system to bring andesite up from bedrock to populate this drawer, which I've kind of started to populate a little bit. Uh, so let's talk about what our plans for this system are. So first off, I'm gonna do something very simple and vanilla-y. Uh, we're gonna use hoppers for this bit. Boom, and boom. And that should get our andesite cobblestone and algae bricks mixing into, you guessed it, uh, the, the, these things, right? And I've already hooked it up to the chest, which is gonna route basically right over to here. Uh, and start allowing these things to be contraptioned again. Cool? So he should eventually start behaving himself. I guess we'll see. Uh, maybe one needs to fill up before the other. Don't you have a round robin in you? I thought I put round robins in all of you. Oh, maybe I didn't. Ha, ha. Oh, that's right, because I took, uh, you know what? That's why. Uh, yeah, we should probably round robin you. Boom. Now you should be happier. That should be better. In theory. Um, hey, there we are. Nice. So yeah, things are things are cooking once again. How cool is that? So with that said, we need to get andesite up here. Because at this point, everything's automated, right? Like, we're making all the algae brick we need. We need more andesite, though. Uh, but at this point, we are pretty close to having fully automated the entire production line for what I would call effectively infinite resources. Uh, now, now, as mentioned, for sure, I still need to manually do some of this stuff. Um, did I... I fully intended to tell you guys I did this last episode after the beacon stuff, but did I tell you that I did this? Yeah, I did this. I did this. Uh, so before we get to the shenanigans over there, let's let's let this thing run. Um, basically, I, I increased everything a little bit over here to speed it up a little. Uh, so you can see we're getting our four sets of quantum entangled singularities now rather than one set. Um, and then these guys are going to go in here, and basically we're now washing two sets of paintballs at a time. So once we build up a little bit of a backlog here, you'll see it's going to do two. For some reason, it takes a second before it starts doing There we go. Cool. Look at that. So basically, uh, I didn't have to change much. I just added a second chest here so that they can both output into two item drains. I moved the, the, the pipe down here so that it extracts out the bottom of the item drains for fluid. Okay, um, and then I have another chute. I rotated this double chest. It used to be here and here. Now it's here and there. Um, we still have the comparator output to block things when it gets too full. And, uh, you know, just rearranged how some of the piping works. But overall, very mild changes to effectively double the draining of chromatic waste, right? And that works out pretty well, I think. It, it's, it's, it's working fine, like nothing broken, everything good. Um, and it basically doubles the speed of this whole setup, right? If you think about it, instead, this is our this is our slowest point is the washing of these things and turning them into magenta paintballs. So by doing this, we've a hundred percent doubled it, right? So that's kind of cool. Just wanted to mention I did that between episodes. Um, but now let's talk about our shenanigans plan for bringing andesite up from bedrock. Is it over engineered? Yes, you've been warned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use portable storages, right? So this is going to be step one-ish. Uh, let's have a portable storage here. Is that the right direction? Yes. And then a gap and a gap and da, 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 and you're going to go like that, okay? Uh, effectively. And then on that, uh, we're going to get some super glue. Cool. We're going to get uh, some linear chassis. I mean, realistically, I don't think we even need the linear chassis because I don't think it does a whole lot for us. Um, but it's all good. And then we're going to have a chest like so. Okay. Um, now, the next piece that I'm going to want to have here is I'm doing this with a rope pulley. How fun does that sound? Eh? Eh? So you guys familiar with rope pulleys? Because they're cool. They're super cool. Uh, rope pulleys are fun in that um, they can lift things up and down. 
So it's like a vertical piston, if you will, where a piston can push things forwards and backwards. Uh, rope pulleys can lift things up and down, and they can go about 130 blocks. So literally, I just put this rope pulley here and start giving it some rotational force, and it's going to 130 blocks rotate, which is awesome. Um, so let's get ready with our plan here. Uh, I'm probably just going to... Perfect. Uh, now, what might be cool, what might be cool, if I wanted to... How big of a deal would this be? Could I get you... I would like... What I think I would like, if I can, would be to get a bunch of dirt here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. And I'm going to let this run all the way down. Okay. Are we out of dirt already? I am. I didn't grab a ton. I grabbed a little. So that would be you and you. And then I just got to deal with the whole drowning mechanic. Fun. But then I can just boom, right? So we'll just have a pillar of dirt going downwards ready to support what I want to do here, which is shenanigans and fun. That should be enough to start. Cool. And then I'll probably just do this, right? It looks like I'm running into a mining cave. Not a big deal. And I should probably just get out my hammer because you know we're going to need it in like a minute. Uh, so let me put away some of this dirt. And I'm just going to clear all the way down to bedrock. Deal? And then we'll figure out the whole pulley system that we're going to do. And I should probably keep you at the ready because you know we're going to run into some dirt and stuff too. Alright, is that perfect? Looks pretty perfect to me. Nice. Remember kids, don't dig straight down. Though I think I still have flight here. Because beacons um, go up and down very far. Right, so we should be cool. I don't have my wireless transmitter, but that's not that big a deal. I can uh, put some junk away. I don't think I need trap doors no more. There's a lot of things I probably don't need, but we'll hang on to. All the way down to bedrock. Cool. And then we'll figure this whole mess out in a minute. Cool? Alright, so if I'm not mistaken, this rope pulley should be able to go all the way down. Now, do sequence gear shifts have a rope pulley mechanic? That's a question that I don't actually know the answer to. But we're going to figure out uh, effectively right now. So what I want to do is set up with my sequenced gear shift. I guess we can do it here. Uh, we're going to have to figure out a way to get rotational stuff correct, but we'll deal with that in a minute. But can you turn... Move piston pulley cantry. Okay, that works. Um, how high can this number go? Pretty high. Nice. Double speed forward. Um, and then we could say, like, wait. Uh, time delay? Time delay sounds good. Ten ticks. And then it's called piston, but it works for pulleys and gantries as well. Uh, I haven't done the math on this yet, but I want to say it's pretty darn close to 64-ish. So I'm going to start with 64, because if we look at where you're at, Mr. Pulley, um, you're looking at targeted block is Y64, and then we probably want to bring it down to somewhere in here. Um, so realistically, let's figure out where the whole setup is going to be, right? Because this shouldn't be too bad. So if we look at it, um, you're going to come down to here, and this is where 
this guy is going to go, right? Right around here-ish. So what we could have, remember, we want him to be on bedrock, right? So what if, if this is where this dude's going to chill, right? This is right where he's going to line up with. Um, then about one block away, let's say if this is going to be the connector, right, then we're going to want another connector lined up here, right? And that could connect to uh, probably a pipe. That's going to insert things, right? So what if we had a pipe, a pipe, and a drawer that was going to be Mr. Andesite? OK, uh, we should probably lock you. And we should probably be ready. I'm going to have, I want probably a higher tier extractor module here, but we'll deal with that in a sec. Okay. So that should be cool. So by doing this, he'll come down, he'll stop when he hits this bottom. So it's realistically going to be about 60, not 64 blocks. He'll connect, uh, we'll extract items into the pulley system, uh, which means that if I want our igneous extruder to chill here where's my buddy igneous there he is i knew i came prepared sweet um and then we should probably disconnect this wrench and what i should have is the auto output on the right thing so i'll get that added in a second but he's above bedrock so if i do this and i do packed ice he should be making andesite cobble sweet okay so now what we want to do is get one of those um um, augments for auto output. Modular reconfiguration. And he doesn't seem to accept. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't want to do that, does he? That's a little bit annoying. Killing me, Smalls. Why do you accept the augment if you don't work with it? I did put the right thing in there, right? Allow sides to be... Ah, you're killing me. Probably because it's the lower tier machine. It just doesn't work. So we might have to do... Um, I'm going to get two Invar level dudes. How am I for Invar machines? Actually, I have two Invar level dudes right here. Perfect. I can go saw those up, right? Aren't you guys glad, by the way, that I got creative flight before building something like this? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right. So then what we're going to set up here then will be pretty simple. Wow, you're broken? Oh, right. And you're, yeah, no. I'm going to have to do it on top. That's fine. That's not a big deal. Cool. Uh, so I want medium extraction modules here. And then what I would probably like is to be able to see what you're making. Right, you're broken, I forgot. Not at all what I meant. Oh no, don't do that. You good now? You're good now. Cool. Gotta be careful around the lava and everything. Now, I feel like I heard that go into my inventory. Oh, right. Eh, yeah, no, you should be good, right? Okay, cool. So now, are you extracting or what? Medium extraction module, you should be good. Cool. And then I can lock you. Cool. And then uh, the pipes, boom, boom. Right. I need to go fix my pick, is what I need to do. But... Uh, I should be able to put this in here and nothing will happen, I guess. And then we'll see if we can't get him to behave. So I'll be back in a minute when we're ready to set up the pulley. All right. Four cobalt later and we've got a repaired pick, which is exciting for me. 
And now let's figure out how to get the pulley to go down. And let's see if we can actually make this thing behave itself, right? So, um, yeah, let's do it up here first. So what I need to do is get some rotational energy from here to there-ish. Wow, that's going to be uh, a little bit annoying. And I'm also hoping that this guy doesn't have too many stress units. How, my, how much stress do I have remaining over here? We have 200 stress units remaining. So hopefully he doesn't use 200 stress units. I can't imagine he will. I can't imagine he will. But you never know. It's true. You never know. Uh, so to get you spinning, how can I connect you? Uh, what I could do, there's a few ways, obviously, to do this. What I should probably just do. What if we did a... See, that happens. Why does that happen? Why are you being weird? Vertical gearbox. And a belt. All right, let's do this. All right, how do I get you to unselect you? There's probably a trick to it, but I don't know what it is. So if I do that, is that cool? And then I can... All right, so now he's going to use zero at current speed. So if I give you a redstone signal currently with a button probably would be the best way to go. Overstressed, 320 stress units. Boo. If I threw another water wheel over there, though, we'd be fine, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. So I'm going to do that. Let's do this. Hold on. Let me get you. Everybody's back to running. So you're going to need to piston at around 60. And then delay 10 ticks and then piston around 60 backwards. But I'd like you to be double speed if I can. So let me throw just a few more water wheels over here and then we'll be groovy. Cool. So like literally I think one or two. Because each one of these is 320, right? So how about I just do two? Alright. I added three because that's how many I happen to have in my applied energistics environment. So three more water wheels which gives me up to... 1920 stress units remaining, which makes everybody happy. So now if I pressed my button, are you going to behave yourself or are you going the wrong way? I don't even know. We're going to find out. Over, wait, over, how could you possibly be overstressed? You should have more than enough. Negative 120, explain. Explain how that overstresses you. Explain how that overstresses you. I'd really love to know. That doesn't make any sense. Two hundred stress units remaining. But I just added more. And you literally just a second ago said I had way more than that. Maybe the sequence gear shift uses some? It's possible. No, he doesn't say he uses any. Yeah, why are you at that many now? How'd you go 200 again? Ah, uh, now I'm super confused. All right, just added three more of these. I don't know why I needed to, but let's see what happens. Uh, so now you're at 1160 again, capacity. <laughs> Uh, you gonna be you gonna be weird this time? All right, let's just have you go down five. Delay ten ticks, and then so double forward, double reversed. Okay. Interesting. I might need your delay to be longer. You know what? Oh, hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, now I see what's happening. He's going to pause there. Yes, I see. Okay. So if I make you 10 and 10... Why are you getting stuck? You shouldn't be getting stuck. Shouldn't you be coming back up? Where are you getting stuck at? That's a significant question that I don't have an answer to. Interesting. He doesn't want to go up when he has the stuff here. So is it you that falls on the problem? Nope. And he'll go down a little bit. Yeah, for some reason he didn't want to move anymore when he had a chest attached to him. You know what I bet it is? I bet it's you. Yeah, let's make you a range of one. That's probably all it is. Alright, so now if I made you... Let's say... Let's say a hundred. And then... Timed delay... Two, uh, a second, and then a hundred in the opposite direction. Cool. Forwards and then reversed. So then he should go down. Wee! All the way to here. In theory, this should be working, right? He comes all the way down. And we could speed it up if we needed to, but I don't know that we're going to need to. All right. And then when he's connected, this guy should start sending or no? Nope. He decided not to send no more. Hmm. I had hoped you would connect. Yeah, he just doesn't connect long enough. So like a mode for this guy or something that I can do? Just so that he knows he's supposed to like connect and get items because he's meant to go in and out and i've only ever used it in this series to extract items from the contraption but i want to insert items as well so do you have like a mode or something buddy it doesn't look like he does um and then also by the way i'm totally gonna need to do something like that right we shouldn't forget that that's a thing we need to do Yeah, we should totally get this. All right, so we're close. We're close. I just need to get him to behave a little bit better. Um, yeah, you want to extract from here. All right, so yeah, the problem is, is he doesn't realize that he's supposed to be putting items into the contraption. So I have a theory on why it's not working. I think the items aren't getting to the interface fast enough. So the interface is like, I'm only going to wait a second before I decide that I don't have any items to put inside this chest. And since it takes too long for the for the stuff to get there, you should be on your way down, yes? So if I threw an acceleration module into you, maybe that would be fast enough to let this guy start doing his thing, right? And did I bring a void upgrade? Good. I did bring a void upgrade, because I would like to have you be void upgrading. It shouldn't matter, but because I didn't have anything, so now hopefully you're fast enough. See, now he's filling. Now he's filling because we have an acceleration module in there. It was taking too long for the andesite cobble to get to the portable storage interface, um, so it didn't work. Okay, so now he should be lifting, and hopefully he's going to lift enough. If I need him to lift more, then we can do something, right? But we'll deal with that in a second. But if this works, that would be cool. Cool. And now we've got it working. We've got it working. How cool is that? How cool is that? 
and then he's gonna sit there and he's empty, right? Now we just need to pulse him again, and he's gonna run again, right? So he'll extract his items if there were any in the chest. There won't be. So now we just make this run every minute with a timer of some kind. And Bob's your uncle? Yeah? How cool is that? I think that's fun. It's different. It's a different approach, clearly. Uh, you know, could it have been done more easily with six other different ways? Sure. There's definitely easier ways to have accomplished what I wanted to do here. Um, now, unfortunately, I just noticed he didn't connect. Why you no connect, buddy? Why you no connect, buddy? Still not fast enough? You're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me, Smalls. I think, I think now it's faster, but not quite fast enough. So what I'm thinking I might want to do, check this out. What I'm going to do is a tier three high speed and retrieval. Well, I didn't really want that to be retrieval. I, I meant to make a, not retrieval, but a, well, yeah, I guess I'll use the retrieval somewhere else at some point. Yeah, I want you to be the extractor. And then the retrieval can go away for another another time. So hopefully tier three is fast enough. If it's not, we're gonna have to, you know, come up with another solution here. Okay. So now that should be super quick. And I'm assuming extract extracting stackish at a time counts. Right? Maybe a stackish at a time. So you go. He's going to be like, nope, I don't got anything to export, so now I'm going to drop. And by the way, the faster you spin the gears, the faster the pulley moves. So we could absolutely make this move up and down faster, but I don't think it's necessary. You know, I think I think the I think that will be fine. Definitely fast enough now, right? Definitely fast enough now. Sweet. I think that's cool. That seems to be working. And like I said, we make this run every minute or so, and then we'll be good. I, I mean, works for me, right? Now, how's my... Uh... See, now we have 840 stress units available. I think something weird happened with the stress units. I really do. I really, really do. I wonder if I could make you guys a little faster. Is there anything that would hurt if I made it faster? I don't think so. You think we could do that? With, uh... Because underground here is where that stuff is. We should be able to easily... Right, we could do you, 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 you. Okay, so now with you spinning, you're still at, well, now you're at 1160. I changed nothing. There's absolutely no reason that should be the case. Well, maybe because it's not running at the moment. Yeah, 1160. So let's go ahead and let you run. And now you'll be at 840, which makes sense. Now, if I were to speed you up just one little bit, not overstressed, and you're at 520, now you're overstressed. Okay. Okay, but still, everything should run a little bit faster now, which would be more than welcome. Okay, neat. Oh, now he's overstressed. Now he's overstressed. What a bummer. What a bummer. I was really hopeful that that would work. I was really hopeful that that might work, but no such luck. Doesn't matter though, we don't really need it to be any faster than it currently is. I think we're in good shape here, honestly. I noticed that you didn't empty entirely when you came up here. Now, we can set the pulley, like with other things, to turn into blocks when he goes. So what I could do 
is forego the, 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 these connector dudes. That might be the smarter route. Let's do that. Let's say forget this and this. Okay, let's instead just put the chest. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of junk. Uh, come over here, you. Okay, what if we just put the chest? Okay, and then had Now you are going to have to be a retriever module because the chest will get broken or the, the retriever module will pop out if this guy loses connection to the chest. But in theory, this should work, right? I just need to filter you. And a site cobble. Cool. That could work. And then if I bring you down, he'll just lose his connection for a sec. I want him to go all the way down and then pause. And then we could set him to basically that, right? And then the extractor. So now he fills up the chest. Because when he stops, he turns into a full normal block. Got it. And then there might be a little bit of item spillage. But I can live with that. I can live with that. Right? Where's my wrench again? Yeah, because this guy is set to um, always place when stopped. Cool? I think that's better. I think that's better. And now we don't have to mess with the with those connector things that aren't as reliable as you might want them to be. In this setup. Alright, so now we just need a timer, which I assume these are in alphabetical order. So yeah, timer's down here. And we can set this to like run every minute. Does that sound cool? Right? So every minute he's going to run. And I just want to see him pulse. Okay. And then he'll go down. Woo! He will... Um, if I put a, like, a lava bucket right here or something, then it would just void whatever it... And that would be kind of cool. But, eh, it doesn't matter. Not that big a deal. But, uh, yeah, if I put a, a lava block in the world. But then, boom, he's going to start filling up with andesite cobble. Courtesy of this drawer cool how cool is this i think it's cool but you know me i like things they're fun and then boom he's ready to go he's gonna go up and that's based on the delay remember um so whatever delay i set it to on this thing one second doesn't it feel like it sits there for longer than a second probably because i told it to go down 100 blocks um, if I made this the accurate 60 block distance to go down, what's happening is he's going down 60 blocks and he can't go any further, but he's trying to go another 40 blocks, right? So if I set this to, let's say, the accurate number, which should be around 60, check. Um, and then I'm just going to manually this. Actually, let me get a button. Did I remove the button? I might have left the button in. I did, yeah, good me, good me. Right, so now what'll happen is it'll only pause there for about a second, right? Um, and then we could increase the pause to make it more accurate. Is that smart? I think it's smart. I think it's smart. You tell me if it's smart. See, it only stops for a second now, which is the more accurate timing. Um, because I said go, you know, down 60 and then up 60. So now we could say something like pause for 10 seconds and that delay would be accurate. Oh, I guess it, it comes up when I, you know, so now it's going to go down. 
I'm just going to pause for 10 seconds. Now remember, it, 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 it still had some way to go down, so it's going to pause for a little bit more than 10 seconds. But it should be about a 10 second pause down here. And then it'll go back up. Cool. In theory. Nice. Now it looks like it took it, you know, I'm going to make it go every two minutes. Does that sound good? I like that. Every two minutes you can run. Perfect. Perfect. All right. I'm going to call that wrapping up point. Is that cool? I mean... <laughs> You know me. I like things. I think I think it's I think it's cool. Is it more than it needed to be? Absolutely. Is it is it fun? Uh, I would say so. How do I get the stickiness off here? I thought you could just break it. All right, you're still going to behave, right? Good. Good. So then it's going to go all the way down. It's going to pause for 10 seconds, and then it's going to come back up. Hello, bat. Don't mind if I do. Right? So let's see. About 10 seconds. 1, 1,000. 2, 1,000. 3, 1,000. 4, 1,000. 5, 1,000. 6, 1,000. 7, 1,000. 8, 1,000. 9, 1,000. 10, 1,000. Works for me. All right, wrapping up point. Donald 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you think about it as it stands right now, uh, we have now fully automated, without any need for any manual intervention, every aspect of this design, except this part, which I'm purposely still doing a little bit slower, um, but not, you know, too bad. We'll do five of you, uh, and we'll do five of you. So for now, uh, we'll come back next episode, and our plan will be to expand across here and we're going to start working on chapter five okay and chapter five the first thing i'm going to do is start melting down uh some liquefied logic okay so that shouldn't be too big of a deal we'll get a melter of some kind and decide how that's going to work probably an inner tank of lava or something like that and then we'll proceed from there to do some cool stuff right uh but for now delta my signing off hope you guys enjoyed the episode take it easy